Hello, my name's Lisa and I'd like to welcome you back to my channel. Thank you very much for choosing to click on this video. I do appreciate each and every one of you and if you are a returning subscriber then thank you so 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 much. So today's video is about one of the 15 people that went on the retreat to Colombia with Jessie Lee Ward and her name is Christy. So let's dive right in and listen to what Christy has to say. Hello everybody, it is Christy from Ohio. You can also call me hashtag Sassy Keto Queen. When you hop on, make sure you say hi, hello, let me know where you're coming in from. And if you want to catch me as soon as I go live, make sure you're tapping my nose, three buttons in the top and you'll get notified as soon as I go live. Now don't forget to say hello because I cannot always see when you hop on and I wanna make sure that I say hello to you. Uh, and do not forget to smash that share button, share this to your wall, low carb keto groups, mom and dad groups, travel groups because you're going to want to hear this. Um, I am going to tell you what happened on my trip to Columbia. Um, I just got back Friday night um, and I came back to Ohio. Um, I left 89 degree weather there in Columbia and I came back and we now have five inches of snow on the ground and there's more coming tomorrow night into Wednesday, uh, probably another five to seven inches. So I'm ready to go to the Bahamas in a week and a half because I do not want to be here in this snow. I do not like snow. When it snows, that means that I work lots of overtime hours. Um, so do not forget to say hello to me because I want to see how far I reach. Uh, I want to see if any of my uh, friends that I met while in Colombia are on here. Um, so we shall see how many people hop on and where they are from. So there we have it, Christy is diving right in and trying to bump up the algorithm straight away by asking people to comment where they're from. Obviously the more engagement she gets on her video, the more widely spread it will be shared. But I do have to agree with her about one thing, I definitely prefer the heat to the snow which is one reason that I moved from a pretty cold place to an extremely warm place. I don't blame anyone for doing that, that was for sure. The only difference is I don't need to go to the Bahamas or to Colombia to have nice weather because that is something in Tenerife that we have all year round, luckily. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened when I went to Colombia. Now, this was not a vacation. This was a retreat and it was definitely not a vacation. Um, the first day we got there, um, it was, we had had long travel day. Uh, we did kind of like a team building exercise. Um, where we walked the streets. This is what they told us. Okay, take your shoes off and we're gonna take our blindfolds with us, okay? So we knew something was happening with these blindfolds that we had brought. So we had these blindfolds that we had brought with us and so we start walking the streets of Colombia with no shoes on. And what? They're walking the streets of Colombia blindfolded and no shoes on? What kind of crazy is that? Have you ever seen the streets of Colombia? Because I certainly have and I can tell you mm, they leave a lot to be desired. Wow, you could catch anything doing that. Who in their right mind's going to tell their team to walk down the street blindfolded and barefoot? Mm. We know the answer to that, don't we? Jesse Lee Ward. The person that has organised this trip is the one telling them to do that. Now why on earth do you think she would make them do such a thing? Let me know in the comments. And we're just walking and talking and laughing and it, looking at all the beautiful, I mean it is absolutely gorgeous there. It is very high poverty but it is gorgeous. The buildings are painted amazing. There are flowers hanging everywhere. It is absolutely amazing. If you've not checked out my uh, Facebook wall, there are lots of pictures on there. I will be posting more pictures on there as well. Go check those out because it was an amazing place. 
Well, I have to agree with Christy there. Colombia is an, an amazing place. There is lots to see and lots to do in Cartagena as long as you stay with your party, I would say. If, you, if there's a group of you, you're going to be a lot safer. But there are definitely places in Colombia that you shouldn't go alone especially if it's somewhere that you've never been before. The streets were dirty, it kind of stunk. Um, so we're just walking, talking, and having a great time. All of a sudden, we go up a few streets, we turn a couple times, we go up some more streets, and then we stop. And our guide, our uh, leader, says, pick a partner, so we have a partner. My partner is George, and George does not speak a lick of English. None. I know very many words. He uh, understand it. I don't speak Spanish, so the communication was... But it was okay because we didn't need to communicate. We weren't allowed to communicate. So, But we were allowed to communicate for two minutes. Well, I'm a little bit confused now. We weren't allowed to communicate. Yes, we were allowed to communicate. So... Which one is it? Because you're contradicting yourself there, Christy. So were you allowed to communicate or not? And even if you were, how were you going to communicate? Because he doesn't speak much English and you don't speak much Spanish. None of that sounds like a very good idea to me to put your trust in someone that you can't even really communicate with. But obviously, that's just me and my opinion. When we got there, he's like, we're going to find our way back home. I was like, I don't remember how to get home. I wasn't even paying attention. I was talking. And so was everybody else. So everybody else is like, how do we get home? How do we get home? They said, okay, don't talk amongst yourself. You can talk to your partner and see if your partner can remember how to get back. So I had to have a translator to ask my partner, how do we get back? So he was very intuitive and he remembered how to get us back. But he was going to have a blindfold on, remember? Because uh, he was the first one up. He was to be blindfolded and I was going to lead him. I was like, oh crap, we could be in trouble because even though you tell me how to get back, I don't always have the best memory. So Be honest now. Would you seriously walk along with someone that you're leading, they're blindfolded, you can't communicate with them, and they're telling you they know the way back? I mean, that's an awful lot of trust that you've got to put in someone that you don't know, and they could be leading you anywhere. You should always look up where you're going to and take notice of what the government says regarding the places you're going to because not all of Colombia is safe. So it just sort of beggars belief to me why anyone would think that what you're being told to do is a good idea. Because in my mind, it's a very bad idea. Especially when you can't communicate and you've got no shoes on. <clears throat> that just doesn't sit right with me at all. And I was having my translator say to George, how do we get back, George? George tells me how to get back. Two streets, left, one street, right, up a street, left. Okay, if that's how it was. Something like that, of that sort. So I said to my translator, tell George that he needs to pay attention and I'm going to tap him on the hand when we went up a street. And I'm going to ask him which way we're going to go. So that's exactly what we did. So I would tap him on the hand when we would come to an intersection. And then I would tap him on the hand when we would come to another intersection. And I'm like, I can't remember, left or right, George. And he would tell me right. And so we communicated without communicating. And he had a blindfold on. And I had to keep him from running into things, uh, hurting himself, falling off the sidewalk, getting run over by cars, bicycles, motorcycles, and horse and buggies. Uh, so I had a big job. So not only was I trying to remember, but I had to protect him as well and not let him hurt himself. I wonder if she was seriously panicked when all this was going on. I mean, did she even feel safe in this strange place that 
I get the feeling she's never been to before. She's walking along barefoot with someone that she doesn't know, that she can't communicate with. I mean, put yourself in that situation. Would you be scared? Would you be apprehensive? Would you be worried? I think I would. I mean, I know that you've got to trust this person because he lives there, but you've got to have some serious concerns about this. And yeah, I think I certainly would be very concerned. So we're going along. These two in front of us go straight. And I was like, I, I asked George, I was like, right or left or straight? And he's like, left. So I was like, yes, they're going the wrong direction. So we're going to beat them back. So it was kind of like a race, but it wasn't a race. But we got back safely and George did a fabulous job. We did great uh, non-communicating because we couldn't communicate anyways. Um, but it was um, a great experience on a leadership and how I lead and how I follow, um, because then it was my turn. We went a different direction, but we were all a little wise to the game this time. Um, even though I wasn't going, I was going to be blindfolded, I still was kind of trying to prepare my mind how we were going to be coming back home. So I was a little more cognitive of what was going on. The second time around, we were not talking, we were not laughing, we were just paying attention to the route that we took. Um, I did end up... Um, like I was walking and I was like trying to, cause I would feel like people close. So I would get your senses are all like jumbled up. So your senses, like all the, you felt like people were like right here, but the sidewalks were like one person sidewalks. Um, and then you would have to go down off the sidewalk. If there was a homeless person laying there, if there was somebody standing there, if there was people kind of gathered in a doorway. You would have to go down off the sidewalk, so you'd have to kind of guide the person down off the sidewalk carefully. You could walk in the street for a while and then a, ca a car or a bike or a motorcycle, something would come towards us. He would have to get me back onto the sidewalk and we could walk a little bit more. Well, I stepped in something. Ugh, I don't this is all part of a team building exercise. And the whole point of Christy and the other Prove It Huns putting these videos out is to explain to everyone that what they did was okay, that they felt good about it, they felt confident about it. But as you'll see as we go through further into this video, this part of the exercise may have been good, but believe you me, the rest of it definitely wasn't. And the reason I wanted to cover Christie's video is because she does the best job out of all of the videos that I've seen of the Huns that went on it to not so much defend the Columbia trip, but she tells you honestly how she felt about certain parts of it. And I believe in some of the other videos, it was very much damage limitation. Because the video I made before this one, and that is Jessie Lee Ward boasting about this trip, she actually took it down. And she took it down for a reason, because she got a huge backlash regarding it. So if you haven't watched it, then I would go and watch that because this one will make much more sense. Um, but let's continue on with what Christy has to say because from now on, it gets extremely interesting. I want to know what it was and I was like, ooh, yuck. So our feet were disgusting when we got back. We definitely did a major wash of the feet when we got back. But I was walking along and I all of a sudden I felt something. And I was like, oh shit, what was that? And I thought, oh, I think that was a person. Um, George says it was not a person, um, but they wouldn't tell me what. You're walking along the road in Colombia. You step in something. You don't know what it is. Well, mm, you know, it could have been a lot of things. It could have been a massive poo. It could have been some rotten fruit. Oh, doesn't bear thinking about really, does it? It could have been just so many things that would be totally disgusting and then you think you walk into someone and they tell you it's not a person but they won't tell you who it is i think i'd rather know to be fair 
Um, and then I'm continuing to walk along. We're getting closer to the house. And all suddenly I feel something on my hand again. And it was like this kind of like brushy stuff. Um, and George told me that, the translator told me, that it was a tree that was hanging down in our walkway. So it was kind of weird to feel things and hear things and just feel things around you um, because your senses were very heightened. The smells were even more heightened as I noticed as I was walking with the blindfold than they were when I was just walking in general. Um, the streets are just nasty. So that... I think what stuns me most about these sort of videos and exercises is that Christy saying the streets are nasty. So why do it then? Why not just say, no, I'm not doing it? I mean, I assume you're free to say no. This is a retreat, so surely you have a decision about what happens on it? Or am I just being stupid there? Does anybody else think it would be okay to say, no, I'm not actually comfortable doing that? Happened on the evening that we got there. Uh, and then the second day, we got to have a really fun day. We um, got out on, we went to the gym every single day. I am not a gym person. I am... I was not a gym person. Um, I just walk occasionally 30 minutes a day. I was not into fitness um, or any of that. So going to the gym was a little out of my comfort zone in itself. Uh, so we go to the gym. Uh, we walk on the treadmill. Um, I complain all the time. I'm like, every time we do, go to do something, I would complain like, oh, God, what have I done? Why am I here? What? Um, this is not for me. Um, I wasn't sure why I even said I would go because I'm thinking this is going to be harder. Well, that begs the question, Christy. Why did you go? If you think it's going to be extremely hard and a lot harder than you think and you're being sounds like, I mean, this is just my opinion, but it sounds like you're being forced into doing these activities and you're not actually free to say no. Does anybody else feel that she's extremely uncomfortable and she's being forced into doing things that maybe her body is not used to and that she could do herself a serious injury if she carries on in this vein? I know if you want to get further in life, you have to push yourself, but there are certain directions that you shouldn't push your body into. If your body's complaining, then you should stop. You should rest. You should do exactly what your body is telling you. You shouldn't be pushing, <laughs> pushing it into doing things that it really doesn't want to do because that is exactly how you end up with a serious injury. I think, and um, so then um, we would go to the, we went to the gym, we came back, we got our suits on and we are going out for the day. We got on this enormous speedboat. I am not about speed, I'm not about danger, I'm not about 100 mile an hour going across an ocean. Um, we went on this boat. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was a little scared at times because we would be doing these big wave bounces and I was kind of getting kind of seasick at one point. Um, but we got out in this one part of the ocean and we were, went snorkeling and it was amazing. I got to um, see all these cool fish out there. I did hurt my arm. I hit it on this rock really hard because they were... I mean, they were like this far out of the water and you would be swimming and then all suddenly you'd be like, dang, go on. Um, and I had gotten big marks all over my arm. Going out on a speedboat and then going snorkeling and seeing beautiful coloured fish is my kind of day out. I would find that extremely fun. But Christy doesn't sound very much like that she enjoyed it on the speedboat. She quite liked the snorkeling, but you think realistically that whoever organised this trip would take them somewhere safe where there aren't big rocks sticking out? I mean, that is extremely dangerous to swim in situations like that, because what if she didn't just bash her arm, as she says, 
you know, what if she seriously bashed her foot or, or her leg or even worse, her head? You know, you're out quite a long way on this speedboat. So what would happen if there was a serious incident? This is sort of the thing that comes to my mind from what she's saying. I mean, maybe I'm being a total pessimist here, which is not me. I am an optimist. My cup is always half full. But, you know, you in foreign countries, you do have to think about these kinds of situations. And it just seems that nobody ha is too bothered about safety, in my opinion. I was fine. Um, so then we got in the boat. We went to an island. We had lunch. Um, we got to kind of spend some time on the beach, uh, get some content made. Uh, we did have a really good lunch there. Um, and then we came back by the boat and we had an amazing day. Um, on Wednesday was the day from hell. I love how Christy describes Wednesday as the day from hell. Oh boy. And is she right? Because I have seen this video and I know exactly what is going to happen. And a day from hell is, wow, that's a pretty mild description to be fair. But anyway, let's continue on and find out about Christie's day from hell. Um, I had prepared myself that we were going to be doing lots of walking, that it was going to be a mental challenge for me. But I never thought I would go through what I went through on Wednesday. Now we had um, no lines of communication. Um, I could take videos and I can take pictures, but there was no, I had no Wi-Fi um, and a lot of other people had no Wi-Fi. Um, so it was like there was no communication. I there was no communication. Well, you need to remember the fact that there was no communication as we progress through this video because that is an extremely dangerous situation to be in to have no communication i didn't have time to even think about social media at this point i was just in survival mode um i had never walked as much as i walked in one single um day in my life we walked for uh, what they did was they put us in a van and we got in this van and we drove out of town maybe a half an hour or so and one thing Christie's leaving out here is this van has enough seats for the amount of people there are, which is 16. It was extremely hot inside this van with all these people squashed in and they might have only been in it for 30 to 40 minutes, but those were 30 to 40 minutes that were extremely hot and extremely uncomfortable for them. They stop the van. They tell us to get out. Like we're on the side of a highway. Like cars are going like crazy. They don't drive very well there. They pass each other. There's motorcycles in and out of traffic. Um, it is just literally crazy, this highway. They're passing us. There's two cars in one lane. At a, another vehicle coming the other way right at them. I mean, it was just ridiculous, the traffic, and then they want us to get out right here. That sounds extremely dangerous and totally irresponsible for anyone to pull over a van on, a, on the side of a busy road and expect everyone to get out of it. I mean, what if someone shot round a corner and didn't see it and there's all these people all of a sudden? That could have been an absolute disaster. Someone could have definitely died there, in my opinion. Here, And it was 89 degrees. Um, so we're all putting on our uh, sunscreen. We are spraying ourselves down with bug spray. We have our backpacks on. Uh, they told us to pack something warm, something dry, uh, three liters of water, snacks, um, plenty of snacks. Uh, what else did they tell us to bring? Sunscreen, bug spray, bathing suits. That's it. Because whatever we had in that backpack, we had to carry. 
So we start out, we start walking, we're doing good. And it's like this incline the entire, the entire way. Well, that's a difference of opinion that we have there. Not between me and Christy, but between what Christy is saying and what Jessie Lee Ward said in her video. Because Christy is saying that there is a slight incline and Jessie Lee Ward is saying it is all completely flat. So which one is telling the truth? Let me know in the comments. So about two or three miles in, I'm exhausted. Like I'm burning up. I never sweat. I'm not a sweater. I am like profusely sweating. I am not happy. I'm like, what have you done? Uh, this is not really what I thought I signed up for. I thought maybe we were going to hike in the jungle in the shade. I mean, I didn't think 89 degree weather on blacktop. Um, but that's what we were doing. You've already walked two or three miles in 89 degrees of blistering heat on a tarmac road. So what preparation did you do before all of this? What were you, how were you told to prepare? I mean, you've already said yourself, Christy, that you walk for maybe 30 minutes a day and you don't even do it every day. So as someone who walks a fair amount you you must have been going quite for quite a length of time to have covered two or three miles certainly a lot longer than 30 minutes that's for sure so it's no wonder you were sweating is it um so i would have to stop every now and then to kind of catch my breath because i am not a nose breather i am a very shallow mouth breather i have found out and that is not good for exercise or long walks um, so I um, was trying to learn how to breathe through my nose and out through my mouth. Um, I was focusing on every step instead of what was ahead of me because I could see a hill and I would be like, oh shit, here we go again. Like each time I would get, think I, we were getting closer, we weren't getting any closer. I'm quite a shallow mouth breather as well. So I understand where you're coming from, Christy, because because I find it difficult to breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And it is something that I have to force myself to do and concentrate on actually doing it. So that will detract you from your surroundings quite a bit and take your mind off of it which to me seems like a good thing because you're saying you're not nearly there yet so how many more miles or do you have to go um so one girl had a heat just about had a heat stroke so she had to stop and take some time and so then we went ahead and we got to take a little bit of a break this break is what helped me I think that if I wouldn't have had this break, I might have been that person that was sitting alongside the road about to have a heat stroke because I was at that point where I was like, I don't know how much further I can go. A girl is sitting on the side of the road having a heat stroke and you all go on. So who's with the girl then and what happens to her? Because what you've said so far doesn't really cover that and that sounds extremely worrying to me. And I'm sorry if you can hear another sound apart from me speaking. It's because I live on a flight path and a helicopter just flew by. Nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. Um, so we got to sit down. We got to have a snack. We got to drink water. We got to drink more ketones. We got to drink electrolytes. Why would you choose to drink ketones and electrolytes? Because they're diuretics and they're going to make you even more thirstier than you were before you started drinking them. Surely you should have just stuck to water at that point because from the sounds of it, you still don't know how much further you've got to go. Um, and we got to rest. I got to pee. Um, so then I was feeling good. The breeze was blowing. We were in the shade. We got to do this little bit of a rest. Um, they decided that the girl was not going to go back, but they flagged down a Colombian. Okay, listen to this. They flagged down a Colombian on a motorcycle. Just, hey, stop. Okay, this young kid pulls over. She gets on the back of this motorcycle with a Colombian that does not speak English. 
and they drive her and one of the guides to the destination, the first destination that we are going to. Are you being serious? Someone collapses from heat exhaustion and you don't have an emergency telephone number to get any help. So you just flag down a Colombian, a total stranger, and you put and you put some woman on a bike with one of the guides. So there are now three people on a bike. They drive like absolute lunatics over there. And you're saying that they don't take her back to where you're staying. They take her to the next point. Wow, how totally irresponsible is that? That is disgusting. What if she'd fallen off? I mean, she's got bloody heat stroke for Christ's sake. Wow, I just can't think of any words to describe how totally, utterly stupid that is and how very, very irresponsible it is to just flag down someone like that. All sorts of disasters could have happened. What if she got kidnapped? Just because the guide is on the back of the bike, is he actually in control of it? I mean, kidnappings do happen in places like Colombia, you know. That has just totally blown my mind. I just, I can't, I just don't know what else to say. That is just horrendous behaviour. Oh my gosh. I'm like, no, not me. I'm going to continue to walk. I don't blame you, Christy. I would definitely continue to walk because that is by far the wisest and safest option, in my opinion. So um, we ended up walking 10 miles the first track. So that was 10 miles that we hiked to this bird sanctuary. And we got to the bird sanctuary. Uh, we got to eat lunch there. They told us we could go around and look at the birds. No. I don't know what the next track is going to hold. I'm going to sit right here and rest. I'm going to cool myself down. I'm going to eat some food. I'm going to drink some water and I am going to rest. I am not walking around nowhere. I don't care to see birds. I don't like birds. I don't even like the bird that's in my house. So you think I want to look at birds? Heck no. Another clever decision by you there, Christy, because as you said, You've already walked 10 miles, which is something that your body is totally not used to doing. You've got absolutely no idea how much further you have to walk. So sitting and resting and drinking and having something to eat was a very good decision for you. Because you're not done yet, are you? You haven't got to your destination yet. So I sat and I rested and then we about an hour or two later we're like next the next trek of our uh, venture. So next we are walking and we're walking down a very dirt road, same traffic, lots of traffic in and out, motorcycles everywhere and we walk about two miles and we get to the beach. I'm like yes we might be done. No we weren't done. Um, we then we're told that we are going to hike over these rocks into this cave and then we're going to see this cave and then we were going to hike back. Well, I don't do heights. I definitely don't do anything enclosed because I'm kind of claustrophobic and I am not a rock climber. Do I look like a rock climber? Well, I have to say, Christy, and this is no disrespect to you in any way, shape or form, but no, you don't look like a rock climber. No, I don't think that is a suitable activity for you to be doing. I don't think that your body should be put through that because rock climbing is extremely difficult, can be very dangerous, especially if water's involved and the rocks are wet and slippery. Um, someone could get a very serious injury. And what I want to know is, if you've got 16 people, I'm surely this is a team from Prove It. So you're going to be all different ages, all different fitness levels, and you're all expected to do the same thing. Well, more irresponsibility in my opinion, that is. No, I'm not a rock climber. 
So there was lots of um, it jagged edges, big leaps that I had to make, drop downs, like my legs are not that steady and I was still tired and I was still dizzy from the walk, the 10 mile hike and the three miles that we had to get there to that beach. Um, so I did it, I climbed up and over, but God was watching over me. Uh, we could not turn the corner and go down the rest of the rocks into the cave because it was high tide. So the water was up too high on this wall for us to get around it with our backpacks not getting wet and we needed to save for dry clothes. It sounds like something finally went your way, Christy and you didn't have to do half of the climb and you managed to just turn back so yes luck was on your side then i really don't think it had a lot to do with god but people in mlms tend to bring the church and religion into the multi-level marketing industry not that i agree with that but I've heard it so often now. That still doesn't mean I think it's right, though. So, we just hiked back over. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and we started hiking down the beach. No shoes on. I'm flat-footed. The sand hurts my feet. You sink in the sand, and it's very hard. And it's kind of like on this incline. So, you're kind of walking sideways. Um, I'm hurting. I'm tired. I'm very grumpy. Um, and I am like falling very far behind. So at the rocks, before the rocks on the dirt road, before the dirt road, the 10 miles, about halfway through the 10 miles, the little Colombian guy takes my backpack for me because the backpack could be slowing me down, he thinks, I guess, I don't know. It's heavy, but it's just a little bit less off me and he was trying to help. It sounds to me that the little Colombian guy has got a lot of sense. And the reason I say that is because he knows exactly how far you are going to be walking. And he knows that you are probably not capable of actually completing the walk, carrying all of that. So yes, it's a good job that he did help you out and carry the backpack for you and the walk on the beach doesn't sound like too much fun to me and if it's on an incline it's definitely not easy to walk on and when you've already walked 13 miles i can quite imagine that your legs would be aching in fact i think you did quite well christy to be fair because there's no way I could walk 13 miles in the Colombian heat. So he kind of stuck with me the whole time. Through the rocks, back over the rocks. Now it's just he and I. Spanish speaking little Colombian guy. He was a little, he was like a little tiny guy. He's got my backpack. He's walking. I'm walking. And we're falling way behind. Like... I'm just, every step I take, I think, I don't know that I can continue to do this. They might have to just like, I don't know. I'm not going nowhere, but I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. So as we continue, he's got my backpack. I would get a drink of water. I put it back in there. And I can't even barely see my group at this point down the beach. Well, I think that's a very dangerous situation to be in. Usually on an organised expedition, you put the weakest person at the front so that they set the pace and everyone keeps up with them. You don't put the weakest person in the middle or at the back because that's what happens. They fall farther and farther and farther behind. So who's looking out for her? The guide? The little Colombian? What help is he personally going to be i mean let's let's set up a scenario let's just say she passes out and he, he has to run off to tell someone that something's gone wrong and then she's left there all on her own or if he doesn't run off to alert someone he's now stuck there with her and maybe he doesn't have a phone that he can communicate to anybody with so realistically he may not 
have been a lot of help and that is just more irresponsibility in my mind it's not intelligent thinking it's not wonderful planning in fact it seems like quite a lot of this was actually pretty crap planning in my opinion there were just so many things that could have gone wrong luckily they didn't but they could have done Here's this little Mexican. I get really scared at one point. I'm thinking, I hope nothing happens and they're way up there and I'm way back here. So I eventually catch up to them. They're all sitting down and we're getting ready to watch the sunset on the beach. And it was absolutely amazing, even though I was a little mad um, that I had fell so far behind and felt so scared. When I caught up with them, I would be a little bit more than just a little bit mad. If I was that scared, then I would be absolutely fuming, livid. And when I caught up with them, I would certainly have had something to say to them about leaving you behind. So we are um, watching the sunset and we then are, um, they're fixing us dinner on this little tiny grill. We eat um, steak and potatoes on these big old leaves. It was amazing. Um, and about this time, and now it's like midnight. Like it takes them all this time to get us food fixed and for us to eat. And it's midnight and here come these two little tiny boats. And I was like, oh, that can't be good. Uh, this is not looking good for me. Um, I don't like water that I can't see down and I definitely don't want to be on the ocean in the dark. Um, I have lots of fears. I've got to ask a question here. <laughs> the leader of this trip, does she know about all of your fears and phobias? Because if she does, then she doesn't seem like much of a friend to me. She just seems like a bit of a control freak. And correct me if I'm wrong here, Christy, but aren't you a diabetic? And if it's not you, there is certainly someone on the trip who is a diabetic. And being put through extreme conditions like that is not good i mean if you're a, a type 2 and it's controlled by food then that's not quite so bad but if you're a type 1 and you need insulin as my mum is when she goes on trips she has to keep her insulin injections cold so how did the person manage to do that and i mean don't get me wrong i know it's possible you can buy those flasks where you put ice in and and put the injections inside but that's something that you have to carry but what sort of preparation was there if the diabetic person got into any kind of difficulty because back along remember i said to keep in your mind that they've got no Wi-Fi and there's no outside communication. So what if the diabetic went into a diabetic coma? You're on this secluded beach where there's nobody else around. There's no civilization for miles and you've got no Wi-Fi signal. None of you seem to know what the emergency code is even if you did have a signal. So what kind of stupidity puts a diabetic person in that kind of a situation? I mean, that just seems totally reprehensible, stupid, dumb and criminal to me. It's an accident waiting to happen, basically. So they say you can either put your bathing suits on and get in the water or you don't have to. It's OK. It's up to you. I'm not going in the water, so I won't run it. I'm not changing my clothes. So we get in these boats and we, they take us out to this, uh, to the ocean and we go kind of way out there and I'm like, oh my gosh. So all suddenly we're out in the middle of the ocean and everyone starts to like scream. And I was like, what is going on? It was plankton. If you've ever heard of plankton, I had no idea it was because they all started screaming plankton and I was like, what's plankton? So it's like these little tiny sea creatures that when you move your arms or your legs or the boat, 
it lights up, kind of like lightning bugs underneath the water is what it reminded me of. It was absolutely amazing. If you've ever heard of plankton, drop me some hearts. If you've ever seen some plankton, say me. Me. I've definitely heard of plankton and I've seen plankton and it is beautiful. I mean, plankton is something that whales eat and not only whales, but I believe there are a few sharks that eat it as well. So yes, it may look beautiful, but I'm not so sure that I would want to be getting into the water with it at midnight in the pitch black. Also, it seems to me this is another dangerous situation. Because I was like, this is absolutely amazing. This is well worth the fear to come out here. So everybody starts jumping in the water and I'm like, oh, hell no, I ain't jumping in that water. It's dark. I don't know what is down there. I have no clue if there are big fish, if there are sharks. I don't know. I am not jumping in. Nope, I'm not jumping in. They're all out there in the water laughing, having a good time. They are just moving. You see all this plankton everywhere. Everybody's lighting up. And there's only three of us in the boat. The pier pressure is kicking in now. There's only three of them left in the boat. And just because the ones in the water seem like they're having fun, that makes you feel obliged to get in. Even though you are extremely scared, as you've already said, you don't know what else is in the water. So I don't feel in that situation that you should have got in, Christy. I think you should have stood your ground and stayed on the boat. And I was like, you are going to be so afraid that you are not going to enjoy yourself by jumping in because you have a fear. Get over it. So I untie my sweatshirt. I'm in my clothes. I put my phone down and I jump into the water. I was like, it was so amazing. I was so excited. The plankton was everywhere. The stars were everywhere. It was absolutely amazing. I would have been so mad at myself if I would not have jumped in. Even though I was fearful, I got over it real quick because we were all together. There was nothing that was going to get us. So we hope. So you hope. So... <laughs> You're all in the water, all splashing around. I know that you did have life vests on. I, that's something that you didn't mention, but I have seen pictures, so I know that you did have a life vest on as well. But that's more targets in the water attracting attention for anything that's potentially out there, surely? Or is it just me that thinks that? Let me know in the comments, please. Um, that we felt... Um, nobody felt anything on their feet. Nobody, you know, we, we were all good. So we go back in and we have our little discussion on how the day went, how you felt, how you got through it, what your mind shift was, all of this. And we got all done and they say, okay, now find one of these lawn chairs on the beach and this is where we're sleeping tonight. After going through the day from how, all that walking when you're totally unprepared, rock climbing, going along a beach which is not flat and is uncomfortable to walk on, going in a boat and being extremely scared and then going back to the beach and being told that's where you're sleeping, I think I'd be saying a lot more than what i would seriously be kicking off we're sleeping on the beach with all this sand on us we're gritty we're wet we're nasty oh we're sleeping on the beach so they gave us like this little tiny like wrap so we had these little tiny sheet like wraps I was like all enclosed except this part because there was these big, huge bugs crawling everywhere. They looked like cockroaches, but they were these big, huge, I don't know if they were or not, big, huge bugs. I'm like, that ain't, thing ain't getting on me. So I had my feet all wrapped up, my body was all wrapped up, and I was literally like this. Um, I didn't sleep all night long. I was scared to death. I was like, what if somebody tries to rob us? What if somebody tries to steal us? I mean, we are in a third world country where the cartel and people get kidnapped all the time. But we had these two guys that, wa that were watching over us all night because I kept watching them that they were watching us. I wouldn't have slept at all either. 
no matter how tired I was because everything that you've just said there, Christy, is very true. People do get kidnapped there. Don't get me wrong, they get kidnapped in other countries as well. It's not just Colombia. But you're a group of women with, by the sounds of it, only two or three men. You've got two people watching and what good are two people going to be against people that do kidnapping on a regular basis you know that is just so 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 dangerous i mean i know jesse lee ward thinks it's highly hilarious because she made that quite obvious in the video that she made that she took down but i think she's actually realized what kind of situation that she put you all in which is why all of the Huns on this trip are now making these videos to say that parts of the day were not good for certain people but on the whole it was all fantastic no no it wasn't it was absolutely stupid um and then about six o'clock the next morning we got up uh, they took us by boat back over to um the mainland where we were staying um, we walked back to our um, villa, and then we got the biggest surprise ever. We were pampered the entire day. We got massages, we got facials, uh, we swam, we uh, did some shopping, and it was an amazing day. Um, it was just an amazing experience, but at the time I was going through it, I did not think so. After being put through all that, your only reward was a massage a facial and you got to go shopping really i'd certainly want a lot more than that to feel good about what happened you were scared out of your wits christy you've admitted it in several places through this video so don't try and put on a brave front that it was all fantastic because through the rest of the video you've made it quite plain that it actually wasn't fantastic for you in my opinion um so we went to the gym uh we also on friday when we got ready to leave we went to the gym and this is where the biggest mind shift thing happened day one i was so negative and so like oh god i can't do this on the last day i went into the gym and I thought to myself, no more negative talk, no more negative in my head. I can do this. If I went through what I went through Wednesday, the gym is nothing. So I get on the treadmill. I am uh, on day one. I was on two on the treadmill, and I was on day four and a half on Friday just to plug in along. I thought, man, it's hot in here. I'm like, nope, it's not hot in here, Christy. It is not hot in here. Wednesday was hot. Um, and then we were doing some floor exercises and um, holding some planks and I couldn't hold it at all on day one and day uh, Friday the last day I was able to hold it at least 20 seconds um, I was doing all the exercises and the three the three people that um, did the whole the whole entire um, trip was Mateo Sasha and Jesse Lee Ward and I it was an amazing experience and they it did exactly what it was supposed to do to shift your mindset on that you can do anything you put your mind to and that the pain is only temporary. So what happened was I was holding the plank and I was doing the exercises and Mateo looks at Jesse Lee and says, what the world, who is that? Pointing to me. And Mateo said to me that I was the biggest change on the entire trip, that he's seen the biggest shift in the mindset. And it made me feel proud because I thought I really had done a lot of work while I was there. I had tried to not be negative. I had tried not to say negative things after I went through what I went on Wednesday. So the whole mind shift thing was what I was going, what I had gone there for and what it had been intended for us to, to happen while we were there. You can have a big mindset shift after going through something like that. But I'm sorry, Christy, I just don't believe that it was all it was cracked up to be exactly the way you're saying it. I don't think that your improvement in the gym after you, what you've just been through 
would be as dramatic and as amazing as your portraying. Yeah, there would have been a bit of improvement, but I just don't think it's how you're saying it. You're just playing down the fact of what Jessie Lee Ward and her cohorts put you through and trying to defend it. But in my mind, <laughs> nothing that any of you that went on it say is going to defend the dangerous situation that she put you all in, in my opinion. Um, so it happened, and I had an amazing time. Uh, it was a rough Wednesday, but I got through it, and I'm here. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. And um, I cannot wait until the next uh, retreat. I am not sure uh, that I am going to be as in bad of shape as I was this time because I am going to make different uh, habits and changes. I am definitely gonna start going to the gym. I am going to start getting my body in shape. I am going to start clean eating a little better because while we were there, we clean, clean ate and my body felt amazing from clean eating. I didn't have any stomach issues. Um, it, it was just an amazing time. So I appreciate and love every single one of you. I am glad that I caught you up. I'm glad that I'm back. Bahamas in a week and a half for a real vacation not a retreat it's a vacation and um, i cannot wait to go so i appreciate and love every single one of you and i will talk to you all tomorrow bye bye <laughs> christy's face there at the end when after she said goodbye and she's turning the camera off looked like a huge massive sigh of relief as if she was made to put this video out to prove that everybody did come back from Colombia. Well, it's true, everybody did come back. No absolutely major disasters happened, but that was by more luck than judgment, in my opinion. It wasn't because of good planning. It was just by luck being on their side, and it could have been a whole lot worse than it actually was. Yes, she put people through situations that some of them probably shouldn't have gone on. Yes, they survived, but that doesn't mean that they enjoyed it, that they actually were better people at the end of it. And I just don't feel that putting a group of totally different people together and getting them all to do the same thing is a good way of working out who you are rocking with, to use Jesse Lee Ward's words. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.